Right, this is the second in a short series of videos I'm doing for GCC computing, specifically about memory. Okay, and this time I'm going to talk about ROM and RAM. Um, you've probably heard of these two acronyms before. You may or may not know something about them. We'll try and tell you a bit more about them now. So what they stand for, first of all, ROM stands for Read Only Memory. And RAM stands for Random Access Memory. Right, now one of them has a really useful name that tells us loads, and one of us has a bit of a weird, obscure name that doesn't actually tell us a great deal. Um, read-only memory is really useful because it tells us something really important. ROM, read-only memory, is read-only. You can't write anything to it. As you're using the program, as you're using the computer, sorry, as you're using your computer system, you can't change what's in the ROM because it's read-only. And that's really, really important. RAM, it kind of ignore what the name stands for, really, because at this level you you don't need to know what random access means. It's to, it's complicated. It's to do with the way it actually gets in and reads the data. Um, but what we do need to know is it's the opposite of ROM. So where ROM is read only, we can't write to it. RAM, we actively want to write to RAM. Okay. And just as a quick prop, there is some RAM. Um, that's what a stick of RAM looks like. You'll have a couple of those in your computer with the chips and the contacts and everything else. Um, and that is your temporary storage. Uh, a quick reminder, I said this in the last video, I'll say it again. The purpose of RAM is to store your currently used programs and your currently used data. Okay, so as you're loading your word processor, as you're loading your, your music player, as you're loading your web browser, the instructions for how to run that program get copied into here for use by the processor, the processor can execute those instructions, and the data you need is also stored on here. So the data for this video is very temporarily being stored in your RAM so your computer can process it and then display it on your screen for you to watch. And that's what RAM's for. And RAM typically um, is of the order of 4 to 8 gigabytes in size. So you might have 2 gigabytes or 1 gigabyte or 4 gigabytes or 8 gigabytes. So we're talking about, you know, we'll say 1 to 8. 1 to 8 gigabytes in most computer systems. If you went and bought a PC today, it would probably have 2 or 4 or 8 gigabytes of RAM in, of main memory. Okay? So it's readable. And it's writable. So you can read from it and write to it. And it's typically 1 to 8 gigabytes in size. And it's used for currently running programs and currently used data. I know my writing is awful. I apologize. ROM, on the other hand, is typically 1 to 8 megabytes. So much, much smaller, 1,024 times smaller, okay, or about 1,000 times smaller. You know, on your computer it might be 2 megabytes, it might be 4, it might be 8. Uh, but that typically is the kind of size you get on most desktop computers. Um, it is readable only, so it's read only, you can't write to it. And its purpose is for the startup instructions for your computer. Now by that, I don't mean the operating system. What I mean is, you've got a processor, you've got a processor, and you've got a hard drive, and you've got, you can't really see those there, can you? I don't want to rub my writing off, but you've got your processor, you've got your hard drive. When you turn the computer on, your operating system, Windows or Linux or Mac OS X or whatever, is on your hard drive, and the processor needs to be able to use it somehow. And so the processor needs to be able to talk to the hard drive and tell the hard drive to spin up and get the data off and get the instructions off and give it to the processor. And that's not as simple as it sounds. And so the ROM is a very, very small piece of memory that tells the computer how to start up, how to check if a hard drive's plugged in, how to check if a CD drive's plugged in, which device to go to first, and, and that kind of thing. Um, and how to actually start the computer from scratch. Once you get past that very first startup, then the, the operating system in here takes over and starts to, to load up the computer, and from there we're fine. And so actually we don't want to change the ROM, which is why it's read-only, we don't ever want to edit it. And its job is just to kind of kickstart the computer or pull it up by its bootstraps, um, which is why you call it booting up, pulling it up by its bootstraps. So ROM, very small, read-only, used for startup instructions. RAM, much bigger, you know, a thousand times bigger, 
Um, it's readable and writable. It's used for currently running programs and currently used data so that your computer can actually do stuff. And that is the difference between ROM and RAM. And that's what they're used for. And if you could ask any questions, then hopefully now you should be able to answer them based on what I've just said.